Hi, everyone. Welcome to our final webinar of our series. So thanks so much for joining. Uh, my name is Melissa Withers. I'm the program director uh, of the Global Health Program of the Association of Pacific Rim Universities. So thanks so much for joining. I wanted to talk to you for just a couple of minutes about APRU and the Global Health Program. Uh, first of all, APRU is the Association of Pacific Rim Universities. A it's a uh, nonprofit network of more than 50 leading research universities in the Asia Pacific region. It's been around for more than 20 years and it is uh, in the Secretariat is in Hong Kong. And the Global Health Program is one of several programs and uh, uh, the Global Health Program is housed at USC. It's been around for more than 10 years. And um, we have a lot of exciting initiatives in addition to our webinar series. And I'll tell you a little bit about them, I think, at the end. Uh, but if you are interested, please take a look at our website at apru.org and APR apruglobalhealth.org for more information. So tonight uh, our topic is the use of technology and innovation to combat COVID-19 in Thailand. I'm really excited to hear uh, more about this. So uh, I think we'll go ahead and get started here. I would like to, I'll be your moderator again this evening, and I would like to introduce you all to our wonderful uh, guest speaker and expert in artificial intelligence from the university um, in, in Bangkok, Chula Longkorn. So let's see. Dr. Praman Wi Watana Kunwanid is currently a lecturer at the College of Public Health Science at Chula Longkorn University. Uh, he has skills in the area of statistics, pharmacy, healthcare access, Tai Chi, and patient support groups, and has done research related to patient empowerment, caregivers burden in Parkinson's disease, and he's worked um, as a consultant for um, a no and and manager for a number of pharmaceutical companies and international companies. He earned a doctorate and a bachelor's degree um, in social and pharmacy administration from Chula Longkorn. And he also received an MBA from the University of Colorado in Denver here in the United States. His goal is to create more work related to artificial intelligence and public health. And you can take a look at his very impressive bio on our website, as well as his reading list for today's talk if you're interested. But without further ado, I'm going to turn it over um, to our guest speaker, Dr. Wee Watana Kun Wanid. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it, and we're very much looking forward to your talk. Hello, thank you, Melissa. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, good morning and uh, everyone. Uh, before I start, I would like to say thank you to the APRU Global Health and also the University of Southern California uh, to invite me as a speaker for today and also uh, Dean uh, Professor Silagon from the College of the Public Health Science, Chula uh, Longkorn University, to give me an opportunity uh, for today. Okay, let me share the slide. So I hope you want to see my slide. Yes, we can see them. 
So the topic that we're gonna talk today, a second. The topic that we're gonna talk today is the use of technology and innovation to combat, combat the COVID-19 in Thailand. Here's my outline. Uh, sorry, a little bit, my slide's not moving. While he's, do uh, while he's doing that, I just wanted to remind everyone um, that we will have time for Q&A. So please think of some questions that you'd like to ask him and put it, uh, put them in the Q&A box. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's get back now, this slide moving now. So the outline that I'm going to talk today, uh, I will start with uh, the overview of the COVID-19 situation in Thailand, and then start talking about how Jhulalongkorn University come up with the technology and innovation to fight against COVID-19. And then I will jump into the uh, nation, Thailand, how they uh, manage um, and also uh, fight against COVID-19. So right now, uh, you can see the cases, the new cases of the COVID-19 in Thailand. Uh, until now, it's about 3,251 new uh, for the cases, total cases. And also uh, about 3,000 that recover already and die, the death case is about 58. And this is the graph of the new cases uh, since the January to the July 12. You can see from the graph that uh, it's quite peak hmm, by the end of March and also quite high in April as well. But after that, you can see that it's dropped uh, a lot for the new cases and dropped until at only one digit, you can see this. So in this point, uh, I will tell you more details about how Thailand managed. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lesson together. How can we make from the high peak uh, in the graph to the fat line like this? Okay. Yeah, everyone with me, right? Yes, we can see. Oh, okay. <laughs> and also, uh, since the January 4th, uh, you, you can see that we had a unit to take care of COVID-19 situation that we call Emergency Operation Center, EOC. And then uh, we launched uh, the new unit called Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration in March. I put the keyword coordination. So to give you a hint a little bit why we need to set up this new center, I will tell you about this later on. Okay. Let's start with the Chulalongkorn, how Chulalongkorn came up with the innovation and technology to fight against COVID-19. But before I go into that, uh, I, want to, I would like to say that during a COVID-19 situation, as you know that uh, Longkorn, we are like a contribute a lot to the public society, but at the same time, the university also care about the staff as well, also all the students, so that you can see that I put 
four pictures on this slide. Uh, on your left hand side, you can see that since we had like a COVID-19 situation, we launched some kind of the guideline for the students, for the staff, uh, so switch to the online courses to prepare for the situation. Uh, we try to communicate to all the staff, all the students to prepare for that. At the same time, uh, the, the president of the Chulalongkorn University also encouraged the staff um, to be uh, prepared. They, uh, he also provided the two kids. You can see on my right hand side, the picture, this one, the mask, the uh, guidelines, the alcohol spray, you can see that, and also some of the methods to encourage us. We also have like uh, the good practice. If you want to enter the building, uh, you need to check um, for your temperature and need to scan um, first before go inside the building. And we also have the center um, to screen for the uh, for the people who are afflicted with the COVID-19, we also have the center that serves all the staff and the students. So this is the, my point. Sometimes organizations also need to care about the staff uh, as well to encourage them to fight during this tough time situation. Uh, in this slide, Tulalongkorn uh, dedicates, you know, the research and innovation against COVID and also collaborate because our university is quite big and we have a uh, different school, a lot of different school, but we join together to come up with the research and innovation. We also join with the uh, private sector as well uh, to create the innovation. And our goal is also support the medical team and also community because we know that medical teams, they work really hard during this time. They need to fight against COVID-19. Uh, sometimes they feel exhausted. So uh, we need to uh, support them. Chulanka also support them, came up with the idea to keep them safe or also facilitate them as well. And the key important point, as we in the academic area, we need to transform the research study into the uh, innovation that can be real practice. I think this one is really important. And then we can see this one for the example that I will show you about the innovation that we have uh, from Chulalongkorn to fight against COVID-19. Uh, I'm gonna talk about a innovation that we have. The first one is the COVID-19 CU Lobo COVID. It's not like an Iron Man. <laughs> so it's a robot. This, this one created by the Faculty of Engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, this one will support and decrease the workload of the medical staff. And it importantly, most importantly, try to uh, keep the medical staff uh, safe. Mm -hmm. And you can see from the example of the robot here, the picture, we have three kinds of the robot. Pinto robot. Miller robot, ninja robot. Actually, uh, the name of the pinto robot, this one is a Thai name. This one uh, in Thailand means like a food carrier. So this robot uh, will send the food and also medicine to the patient and avoid direct contact to the patient. Uh, with the COVID-19. And we also have uh, other two robots, Miller robots and Ninja robots. Two of these use the system of telepresent system. So it helps 
uh, the doctors, nurses to communicate mm, to the patient through the robot and avoid the uh, direct contact, which is to uh, be risky uh, to get infected if we have that direct contact to the COVID-19 patient. To make you have a clear picture about how the robot work, I will show you this one for the video, how the medical staff use the robot. You can see that two doctors move the robot to the uh, patient and also say hi to the patient and introduce them that they're gonna check uh, maybe vital side, blood pressure, uh, temperature, and also to let the patient know that to get ready for this and also communicate and sometimes can give like uh, some kind of the support to make patients not to feel nervous about the COVID-19 situation. So you can see this one. They also can communicate through this. Mm -hmm. And it's quite good to avoid the direct contact that really important. And right now, uh, we use this robot already in uh, many medical schools and we plan to send out uh, the robot to other hospitals as well across the country. The second innovation is about the COVID-19 uh, strict test. This one created by pharmacy school. And the concept of this one, they use like the protein from plants, uh, make like an antigen, mm -hmm. and then they put it into the slip. Mm -hmm. And then we have the COVID-19 patient use the blood test, and then the strip test will test for the immunoglobulin T and immunoglobulin M to test for the antibody. And it takes just only 10 to uh, 15 minutes to get the result. Mm -hmm. This one, uh, I would like to emphasize this just the initial screening. Mm -hmm. But the patient, uh, if they got positive, they need to have like a confirmation from the stand standard test, like a PCR test. Okay. The third innovation is the new design face shield. This one created by the Faculty of Engineering. This one use the material that really uh, comfortable to wear and also it's not heavy and easy to clean as well. You can see that you can clean with the soapy water and also this face shield also anti fog as well. So this one is really uh, good mm, for the face shield. And then I will talk about the next innovation about shield protecting spray for fabric mask. Actually this one, the concept of the spray, that we have like a polymer, and then when we spray into the fabric mask, the material inside, uh, you can see that it will reduce the spread of the structure inside the mask mm -hmm. and we, it will enhance the protection, mm -hmm. improve the PM2.5 as well, and also to the bilateral. Uh, mm -hmm. You can see that it is about 83%. But this one, mm, uh, this spray cannot use for the surgical mask. Mm, use just only this type of mask only because it also has the alcohol. It's not appropriate or good to use for the surgical mask. And the next innovation is the negative pressure cabinet for the specimen collection. 
this one created by the Faculty of Medicine. You can see the cabinet right, in the picture. And here is a doctor. This is a patient. So the way to collect the spe specimen, you can see that if the doctor need to have the direct contact and collect the specimen, it's quite risky for them to get infected. So this is the way to help them safe. Uh, they also have the globe. Uh, and then when the doctors uh, collect some of the respiratory situations, you can see that even though the patient sneeze or cough mm, is still protected by the cabinet. Mm -hmm. So, and also every time that we use our finished using, we also have the cleaning process as well to make the cabinet clean. The next innovation is about the spray dispenser and also the device. This device, uh, the purpose of this one, just to clean, clean or sterilize the medical equipment and sterilize the loom. They use the concept to spray the hydrogen peroxide droplet. And this one will disinfect for the bacteria and virus in the air and on the surfaces of the medical equipment. And the next innovation is the lung care application. Actually, I really like this kind of innovation. Uh, this one you can download from the Android, uh, Play Store, and iOS as well. And at the beginning, when I read about this lung care application, I doubt about, hey, what can I do to blow uh, my brain into to the to where because they say that to take lung care epic lung care function and they use the concept to compare to the sacrum meter. If you know about the asthma patient, you know that they need to check for the lung function, right? But this time they use like the application. So and I at first I thought that oh how can I brought my you know vibrate into where at the end, I just found out the feature and read about this application. Of, oh, they use like this. They have the hole in the speaker, and you need to draw your breath into this, and then they will shake mm, like the sound wave you know, and calculate into kind of the way you to check your lung function. And you can see this one, they also have like a scale. If you if it shows the green color, it's okay. Mm. But if it shows yellow and red, it seems like you might have some kind of the lung disease or some kind of the asthma that you might need to go see the doctor. But the important thing is, it doesn't mean that this application will diagnose uh, for the COVID-19, but it just to take uh, the lung and maybe the your lung damage. Mm -hmm. uh, you if you show that you put into the yellow or the red, maybe some kind of a signal for you need to go see the doctor. Mm -hmm. And also the next innovation is a wheeling application. Uh, I think this one a wheeling application is really good because during this COVID-19 situation, we got a tough time, someone seeking for help. Uh, and at, this, uh, at the same time, there are some people who can survive and would like to help other people. So that's why we, we have this kind of application to be like a mediator to communicate between the donor and also the recipients as well. You can see, from the sharing and receiving. So if you are the donor, you want to donor some things, you just put the information and the contact. And then the uh, lesbians uh, take out the information and it matched their needs. They will go 
and contact with the donor. Okay. This application created by the Faculty of Commerce and Accountancy. Well, we finished about the level of the university that fight against COVID-19. But we will talk about Thailand, the nation level, how they manage um, from the uh, high peak of new case of the COVID-19 and then jump down to the flat um, area. You can see it like this. Uh, let me explain uh, from the review and from the experience as well, from the information that I have. The first one uh, is about the soft policy. Actually, as we know that a lot of countries started lockdown immediately, right? Actually, uh, Thailand also had the same situation, but at the same time, Thailand also uh, did everything step by step. Even though we announced kind of the state of emergency and curfew, we are also opened some of the uh, required basic services like the uh, hospital, the food shop, shopping mall as well, but need to be uh, delivering some of the type, basic transportation we still open but still have the guideline for them as well. And then after the situation is getting better and better, we start to uh, relaxing the lockdown step by step. Right now we uh, relax phase five, and now in the next month, we'll be relaxed into the phase six. We do everything step by step. And at the same time, we know that it impacts on the business as well. So the government and people try to tell each other, the government also compensate some amount of the money to the poor people as well to, and but they must uh, register first. And also some of the business, they also give out food for free uh, to the poor patient. It seems like we try to help each other in the community and you can see that uh, this is a new normal now mm -hmm. you go inside the uh, left wrong you need to protect and have a social distancing and everyone uh, wearing the mask and it's required if you go into the shopping mall go inside the building or something you need to mm, follow this type of the practice And the second reason why we can control the COVID-19 really well, yeah, it's about the village health volunteer and the strong medical team. Uh, for the village health volunteer, uh, it's kind of the front line of the healthcare team. It's really important in Thailand. If you heard about the Universal Healthcare College, uh, you will see that uh, Thailand have a strong infrastructure and also uh, has the village KYTE as a front line to get into all the communities uh, all across the country. And also when we get the village KYTE, we select the people who are willing to do as a volunteer job, have a good heart, and sacrifice uh, their time to take care of the community health. So that's why uh, right now, Thailand has um, approximately about 1.4 million public health volunteers. And it launched since the 1977. So that's why we have this kind of task force to fight against the COVID-19 in Thailand. And also during the COVID-19, uh, all the 
village they volunteer they also work closely according to the government policy and work hard to knock like a door to door and to uh, educate and also get into the families and community members to be careful about COVID-19 and also follow up for the sensitive group or the group that are listening for the COVID-19. This is, I think this uh, second reason, uh, this really is important and is the key point as well. That's why we can control the COVID-19 in Thailand. And also we integrate the technology in the healthcare system as a village health volunteer, they go into the community, but they also have like a technology to, they also have the technology as well to help them to learn, receive the new message and also collect the case as well. And also they can corroborate with the healthcare staff using kind of the, uh, this application that we call Automa Online to exchange some of the information. Even though they also have like a training as well to train, to train for the knowledge about the COVID-19 and also, also got the support and information from the Department of Disease Control and Ministry of the Public Health. And the next uh, application is a Thai China. This one used for our public because we want to track down the COVID-19 cases. If you go into the building or any other places, shopping mall, you need to scan this one to check in and also check out uh, when you go inside the building or inside the shopping mall. And right now we have a English version as well. And the last one, I think it's also important besides the village health volunteer, the way that the government communicates to the public needs to be transparency and needs to be true as well, because you know right now, we have a lot of fake news and a lot of information uh, that we can access to the internet or the social media. So that's why to make the structure centralized and also make all the units and communicate in the same way. That's why we have the Center for COVID-19 Education Administration and then Every single day, uh, the CCSA, they appointed the spokesperson who have the background in medical, try to communicate clear pictures about the COVID-19 situation in Thailand every single day. So that's why people in Thailand, they gain the trust from this and also uh, follow the policy where the mask keep the social distancing, uh, have the hand hygiene because they are so uh, aware of this and also uh, practice according to the announcements from the CCSA. I think this one really important. And you can see this one. If you uh, stay in Thailand around noon, we will have like uh, the broadcast to say about the situation, the cases in Thailand, and also update about the uh, other news policy as well. And also the uh, Prime Minister of Thailand is the head of this unit for the CCSA. So this is the four reason that's why Thailand uh, can control the COVID-19 but we still have a lot of challenges as well that we need to uh, improve and also uh, fight together. And, and this one really important. But anyway, 
what I try to communicate for the webinar today, it doesn't mean that I want to show that Thailand is superior in terms of COVID-19 uh, compared to other countries, but uh, we just want to share some kind of experiences and some kind of the ideas that might be uh, can apply to other countries as well. But there are so many factors as well that some of the strategy can be applied, but some strategy cannot be applied. So I hope that hmm, you can get some of the points from my presentation today. And also, I would like to say thank you uh, for listening to my presentation. And this is my uh, last slide. I'm not sure that I, uh, I speak more than 30 minutes already, right? Hi, Melissa. Hi, Dr. Melissa. Hi, yes. Uh, we can I go on a little bit for one minute? <laughs> yeah, no problem. That's fantastic. We have uh, okay. lots of questions coming in. So mm -hmm. a lot of people very interested in your talk. So if you don't mind, I'm going to start asking you a few questions. Okay. Sure. Okay. So the first question comes from Christelle in the DRC, but also so, some other people have asked the same question, which is basically more about the use of robots in the hospitals are how well are our patients reacting to these robots? <laughs> Quite honestly, uh, uh, I didn't have much information, but uh, I feel like the patients also uh, who 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 stay, you know, in the hospital, I think they are really happy and understand about this kind of situation. That's why we need to use the robot to, to like uh, collect some of the medical information uh, by the doctors because right now, uh, since we have like a COVID-19 situation and all of the Thai people know about uh, the situation in China that some of the medical staff, medical doctors, nurses die of the COVID-19 infection and they work like a almost 24 hours. I didn't know what to say that uh, Thai people really feel like this. And we also uh, see that if we have something that can protect them from their work like a robot, we are willing to do that. And if, if we can keep them safe, they also can save a lot of patient life as well. So on behalf of the patient, <laughs> uh, I feel like they are willing to cooperate uh, with the robot about this. But anyway, the robot still need to improve a little bit, you know. Mm. Great, thank you so much. Uh, so the next question uh, comes from Grace in the Philippines who asks, are there projects for collaboration uh, for disaster resiliency that could possibly be replicated as uh, best practices? Mm, collaboration uh, is quite a good point as well. Um, I don't have the details much about the collaboration, but I know that right now the president of the Chulalongkorn University, uh, he also endorsed all of the faculty members try to cooperate with the other organization, other university as well. So I think that we also have a lot of upcoming projects. Actually, uh, yesterday I got a meeting inside my school, uh, the College of Public Health Science, also mentioned about APRU as well. It's the um, network that we can share and collaborate and help together because APRU, we also have some kind of the uh, sharing knowledge, right? Like a webinar like this. And I know that in the management level, uh, the president of the Chulalongkorn University also kept in touch and also maybe have some uh, projects going on with the API. 
yeah, you as well. And also, I think that I'm not sure about vaccination. If you hear about the vaccination uh, in Thailand from the Chulalongkorn Hospital, they also try to uh, make the vaccine as well. But right now, it's still in the animal study, but they plan to uh, start testing in human food. I think they also have the collaboration with other countries as well to uh, invent for the vaccination for the COVID-19. Okay, great. Let's see, the next question comes from Retno uh, from Indonesia. And basically, uh, the question is about the, the testing. So the rapid testing for, uh, there's n nothing for antigen testing. Um, and so what do you think the most proper technology can be used to come up with an effective and efficient test for early detection? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's quite a good point. Right now the script test also has some points that we need to improve as well. Even though they say like some kind of the uh, accuracy about 80% to 95%, but it doesn't show much some kind of the uh, certification for the sensitivity and specificity, I can say like that. But at least it's kind of the initial screening test to, to, to screen first and then uh, go for the confirmation by the PCR test. I, I, I still think that PCR test is still kind of confirmed about uh, the COVID-19 infection. I think this one very still important, but um, have another issue as well because PCR is also expensive. <laughs> and um, I think the government right now still try to support about this as well. Yeah, so there's a, a related question, uh, which is by Maud from University of uh, Malaya in Kuala Lumpur about the test as uh, a risk screening and assessment tool. So um, does that help in screening people that um, or detecting new cases or only detecting people who have been infected? Um, just like a screening, but doesn't confirm that this is a COVID-19 infection because we need to get, uh, check up, like I say, confirmation by the PCR test. Uh, but if they have the sign, because normally, uh, the doctors need to ask a lot of the information. Uh, if you go to the leafy country and a side of other things like the fever, maybe check for the test X-ray and a lot of things. If, even though the strip test shows something mm, and go to the confirmation, but we still need to have like a policy to quarantine themselves as well uh, to to, to go along together. But for this question, hmm, it's a tough question as well not for me to answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that I answered this question uh, sure. or not. Mm. Sure, okay. Uh, we actually have two people who asked uh, this question. My fantastic student, Stephanie, as well as Flory May, uh, from the Philippines, and they basically want to know if technology can also be used in rural or remote parts of your country. Mm, that's a good point, because some of my countries, I got to admit that sometimes internet connection is not good. <laughs> mm, that's why uh, there may be some problem as well. But at the same time, in my point of view, Right now, the private sector, telecommunication company, they try to make a bandwidth for the 5 g They try to make Thai people access to the internet. Mm -hmm. So that's why they go to the countryside, uh, make the 
some kind of the signal or uh, uh, establish or install some kind of the devices to allow all of those people in the remote area to access to the internet or some kind of the technology as well. Mm. As you see, and that's a good point. Uh, not just only the technology for the uh, against COVID-19, as we are in the academic area, you know the online courses, right? Mm. Actually, to learn to prepare for the online courses ahead of time. Mm. And also, we knew that some students got a problem with the, maybe the notebook, some kind of the internet connection. So that's why we provided kind of the free, free SIM card, free SIM card to connect the internet. And, and I think they also plan to, to allow them to borrow some kind of the devices, notebook as well, mm, to, to make them can be equal to other people uh, in the online courses who have the notebook or have the money to access the uh, internet connection. I think this is a good point as well, good question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question comes from longtime supporter of uh, our global health program, Santi Martini from Indonesia, who asks uh, more about the mask so you mentioned the effectiveness is about 83%. Um, does that mean to decrease the viral number in the mask? How many times do you have to spray and that kind of thing? Oh, I see. Uh, they, they just say like uh, efficiency about 83%, but I'm not sure about how to reduce, but I think it's about uh, the size of the particles or uh, that the mask can filter mm -hmm. because you know that the COVID-19 size is about, if I can remember, 0 0.06 to point, I think a lot point two micron, right? Uh -huh. But anyway, the particle of the COVID-19 cannot stand alone, need to be in the kind of the droplet. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, I think the fabric mask uh, and if you use the spray, uh, it also can help increase um, the way to protect yourself from the COVID-19 in case high up the, in the droplet. Okay. And also, we discussed a lot about the mask. Yeah, I want to tell the story, it's really important because at the beginning in Thailand, we got the issue about the shortage, shortages of masks. I, I think it happened in a lot of the world as well. And also, I'm not gonna touch on the political issue because it might affect me. <laughs> okay, uh, because uh, at now, at, at, at that time, the price of the mask, wow, is super, I don't know, it's really expensive. Even though I went uh, outside along the street, all day, they just sold to me like a one mask is about let me see, um, about two dollars just a one or two thirty call mask actually it's supposed to be just only I think less than one dollar maybe ten cents or five cents but they sold to me really expensive <laughs> it's a short page uh, so that's why uh, some of the uh, people in, in Thailand, they also uh, need to come up with the idea to use the cloth mask mm -hmm. and also have a campaign that, okay, if some people take advantage of you sell high prices of mask, we still have the cloth mask that also confirm that it also can protect as well. Why we, uh, why we campaign about this, use the cloth mask is also okay. And, the, and you also can reuse as well. Mm, you can wash, it's washable, and then you can uh, use this kind of the clothes mask mm, to use again. Even though you are poor, you don't have money, you still can use the clothes mask. Also, you can see in the uh, picture of the village help or uh, volunteer that I show you, they also wash the 
community to make a cross match by themselves, or even though they kind of distribute the cross match that's made by the uh, village they want here to give out for free to help the poor people. And this is uh, also the good question. Okay. Yeah, so related to that question, another one comes from Elaine. Uh, Elaine is in Hong Kong. Are there any projects to cater to disadvantaged groups? Uh, any projects for the disadvantaged groups? Mm. I'm not sure if related to one innovation or not. Uh, in this advantage group, you mean like a poor people? Uh, yeah. uh, you can see the application that we call willing application. Mm. You see that one, right? This is kind of the platform that uh, will send the information. Let's say that I would like to give out my, my maybe some money or whatever. Uh -huh. maybe, maybe not a good example. Give some my cell phone mm -hmm. to someone who really in need mm -hmm. uh, to maybe communicate or contact the emergency but they don't have enough money to buy the cell phone. So they put the information into the viewing application and put my name. My name is uh, Ramon. I work at this uh, uh, University. I would like to donate this kind of uh, uh, something to the people who are in need. And then <clears throat> to people who are really poor or maybe they, they can get access to this kind of application, just in case they have a uh, this kind of application or the cell phone as well. They can see that, oh, I can get something from this person. And even though uh, not the poor people who receive this kind of information, some people who use the application might know the poor as well, who are really in need of the cell phone. They can refer and go to talk with the poor people. Hey, they have, they may, they have someone would like to donate the cell phone to you. Uh, I will contact for you and then I will get the cell phone and give it to you. Okay. Oh, that's I nice. Yes. Yeah. And I got a, another story. Sorry. <laughs> uh, during the tough time, as you see, uh, we also have just only the individual project come from the someone who has a like, good heart. They just put like the shelf or the cabinet in front of their house and also put some other food, the drink, water, whatever, and give out for free. Just put a piece of paper, COVID-19, we help together, strong together. You can take this out for free, but take uh, just a small amount and also share with others as well. Mm. I love that. Okay. We need more of that in, in my country. Um, so Calvin from the Philippines has a question. He said that, that there is a Bangkok Post article that came out on June 23rd called The Seven Secrets of Thai COVID-19 Success. And it was mentioned that there's um, a belief in Thailand that bad people often die of contagious diseases, which is, um, which is the absolute worst curse. And he says, Kub Kun Ka, but can you, is that true? He wants to know. Mm, actually, I don't have uh, this kind of information much, but I still believe that some of the aliens in my country and I think around the world also have a local belief, right? Uh -huh. uh, you see that some of the people, if they want to buy the lottery, they just go to worship some kind of the, uh, their belief, okay? Uh -huh. uh, so in this case, I think um, it's still in the some group of the people who believe this, but at the same time, uh, like I say about the village help volunteer, uh, I want to say something that actually people who work as a village help volunteer, they also form those groups 
of people, but they also have the knowledge. So I think they have the knowledge enough to educate or some kind of share the information, something that might be uh, add some more information about the situation of the COVID-19 that might not be just occur in only for the bad people only, but it spread all around the world. So it doesn't select that you are good, you are bad, you are poor or rich. We also have the same chance to get COVID-19 infection. So I think village here is a okay. key as well. Yes, I get that. Uh, Philip asks, um, assuming that diagnostics are collected and stored by the robots, is there any issue with confidentiality or privacy? Is there data collected by the and stored by robots? Uh, yes, uh, actually uh, we have the good uh, practice, uh, I mean the clinical uh, practice guideline when we work in the hospital, all the patient, uh, confidential, everything needs to keep it confidential. So I think they also have the uh, practice for that as well to keep information of the patient confidential. Okay. And Putri from Indonesia what, would like to know if there are any efforts to use the health, the village health volunteers um, and involve them in efforts to control and prevent COVID-19. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, like I said, uh, the duties of the village health volunteers, not just only uh, telling the information, has the knowledge, they also get into the community as well to follow up and also they have a strong relationship. Mm -hmm. Actually, I put on my slide about the, let me, we show on my slide about the during the COVID-19 infection, the village health frontier need to uh, collect the data. They also use the application, also more online, and also uh, update the information, how to uh, fight against COVID-19, hand hygiene practice. You need to use the soapy water, wash your hands about, uh, 20 seconds mm -hmm. and also avoid uh, like a uh, contact they let me get together drinking alcohol stop doing that <laughs> keep a social distance sure. <laughs> just being with yourself <laughs> and also right. wearing the mask as well and uh -huh. also, that i think is really important if you have some kind of the symptom temperature or maybe your son your daughter just came back from the leafy country uh, you need to inform the village here right here. We will go and help you and try to help you and keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. yes. Actually, we let here right here help a lot. In the yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, well, this has been so interesting and so wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, introducing us to all of the innovations that are happening in Thailand right now. Yeah, we really happy. appreciate it. And thank you to uh, everyone who has joined. I just wanted to remind you that you will be receiving re the recording and the slides um, it, within a, about 24 hours. And if you signed up for a certificate, you'll be receiving that within about a week. I also wanted to encourage you, if you didn't attend all of the webinars, they are available on our website at a, a, aproplus.org. You can see all eight of the webinars in this series. I also wanted to thank you, thank very much the, the Secretariat of APRU for all of their work in putting these uh, webinars together. So they've, uh, as always, been wonderful. You will all be added to the listserv of the APRU Global Health Program so that you can learn about um, all of the other activities that we have. But I wanted to tell you guys, you're the first ones to hear uh, that our conference, which will be held virtually 
from October 19th to 21st, we have confirmed as a keynote speaker, the former Director General of the WHO, Dr. Margaret Chan. So please uh, keep a lookout for, and for the registration for that. Thank you again so much for joining. Um, I appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your schedule to hey, learn Melissa. more about this. Thank Dr. you. Melissa, uh, can I say something, just a short, uh, everyone, sure. you see my last slide about uh, hand in hand, we stand all across the land. We can make this world uh, a better place in which to live, right? Uh -huh. uh, Melissa, you know this, this song, Hand in Hand, before? It came yeah. from the Olympic song in the 1988. You remember? Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, why I want to say like this, because we are people, human, individuals, Right now, some of us just see only the different things. You just judge people by this, by that. So people uh, are this, are that, and it makes like the gap. Uh, and it's kind of a big gap between all of us. Even though I will not talk about the international level, like you say, you are black, you are white, you are Asia, whatever. But we forgot something. Actually, COVID-19 situation also reminds us of something as well. You know that actually we got the same thing together that we are the human beings. Mm. This yeah. is the same. Everyone are the same. That's why if we care and also love each other, held together, hand in hand, I'm sure that we will get through this tough time and we you overcome the COVID-19 situation. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you so much for those inspiring words. And um, let's all work together and, and collaborate and do more for our world as a global community. So thank you, everyone. Take good care.